inflatable pieces, game pieces they're called, like an inner tube, a small inner tube, in different shapes that make up the first logo. So there's a triangle, a square, and, uh, and, a, and a round one. And the teams need to pick up the game pieces with their robot and put them on racks in pre-designated places. And they do that for about two minutes. Uh, there's three teams on each side that form an alliance, so three high schools. And they do that for two minutes trying to run around, pick up things, put them on racks. And then for the last 15 seconds, there's a chance to perform another task this year, and that's to deploy a mini-bot. So while your robot's been running around, it also has on its person a little teeny robot. And uh, so the robot pulls up next to a pole, not too early, not too late, and um, with an arm deploys this little mini-bot over to this pole, and then the mini-bot scales the pole, and if your minibot gets to the top before anybody else's, you get 30 points. Second place, 20 points. I think third place is 10. So you guys are rookies. You haven't yeah, done this, this before. Is our first year. So what's it been like making this robot? I mean, this thing is complex. Yeah. This is no simple machine here. Um, we just kind of went along. It's like, how are we going to do this? And then we slowly, like we would do the electronics and then the pneumatics. And then we did the structure and yeah. it slowly came together. We did it part by part. So what have you learned doing this with the rest of the team members? I've learned a lot about electronics and um, pneumatics, which is air. Um, and then also design. Yeah. For, like, strong instructions. And just knowing what goes on. There's some programming yep. too, so I did some. And just different parts and what they do, so on and so forth. Is that the team made? No, actually, they um, resemble. Oh, no, I've got it on me. They oh, okay. Uh, this robot right here. Nice. This one does. Gotcha. Yeah, that one resembles that. And um, this year I kind of wanted to make a second one that was just a little bit more modern. Yeah. So I came up with this. Yeah, you guys are Team 753, so you're veterans, yeah. right? This yeah. This is our 10th year. You guys are very experienced at this. You've been doing this for a number of years. Uh -huh. So tell me about your robot this year. So this year we tried to make a simple robot. So we spent extra time thinking about the game strategies. And we decided that with this year's game strategy, there were three main points the robot could hit. And that was delivering tubes, or hanging tubes, or playing defense the entire game. And we decided that lots of teams would try to hang tubes up really high, and that if they failed at hanging their tubes up really high, they would become a defensive robot. So we went for a delivery robot that just delivers tubes quickly. Gotcha. Good. So how are you feeling about your chances at this point? I think we're doing good. Yeah. Uh, we haven't gotten to test the entire system yet, but each component by itself works. So we're thinking that the robot will work just fine. What's the overarching goal here? Why, why get kids involved in robotics like this? It actually has nothing to do with robots. <laughs> the robots are just a tool. Yes. Yeah. How do we not it's uh, getting kids interested in science and math. Um, I'm going to use the word by accident. Yeah. Instead of in a textbook and thinking about a test, it's like we've got this common challenge. How are we going to solve this problem? And all of a sudden you realize, well, it, it's a math question, like how far and long and arms and all of a sudden all that physics and stuff that on the one hand maybe you didn't care about uh, all of a sudden really comes into play. And I think all of us when we get passionate and we learn about something that we care about, we learn just you know expo exponentially faster than if we are sitting there in a textbook and it's just theory. So kids are, are learning about science, technology, engineering, math, there's that whole piece. They're also learning about a whole other, sometimes people call it the soft skills, 
of team building project management, fundraising, uh, gracious professionalism, which is in the culture of the whole organization, which it's incredible how a volunteer organization in 50 states and a quite a few countries now has managed to, I guess the word inculcate, the theme of gracious professionalism from an office in New Hampshire down to Seattle, Washington, Westfield, or all the way down to a little middle school Lego team in, you know, Spokane, Washington. Yeah. I think what turns out about first that's magical is it works on all these layers. It takes the geeks or nerds, who are always, always going to be engineers anyway, it gives them an outlet. It takes the next ring out on the dartboard, the wannabe nerds, and it gives them a place. And then it takes the next ring out that kind of like, well, yeah, these kids are kind of fun and it's cool and there's team spirit. And you look around at the way they're dressed, uh, the excitement, the cheering that's going to happen starting tomorrow when they actually have the competition. And all of a sudden, you give standing and presence and creativity uh, on a high school campus to kids that aren't in sports and aren't in the cheerleading environment. And, uh, and so I just am so amazed at why it works on so many levels. Yeah.